Morning everyone, welcome to another Compliance Over Coffee. Confession, I've almost finished my coffee this morning, I'm going to put this down. The title of this morning is, what's in her name? And you could say Tina's gone, she's finally lost the plot, but Tony's been saying that for years, so he's chuckling in the background, it's absolutely fine. What I've got a list of here is a list that we've collected over months and sometimes years of when we're researching on LinkedIn or Facebook or just on social media channels in general or websites for where it's a sourcing agent, but they haven't called themselves a sourcing agent. They call themselves anything and everything other than a sourcing agent to avoid being one associated with the business, which I get because it's got a dire reputation, but two, because they think if they change the name, they change the need for compliance. Now, some of them are quite amusing and some of them are very, very thought-provoking. Thought How they come up with them, I don't know, but I wanted to read you a few out. Real estate finder, property solutions provider, investor agent, property acquisition consultant, property deal hunter, deal maker, property consultant, Property shopper, property advisor, property portfolio builder, investment professional, property broker, property procurement. Now, what I want to get across to you this morning is that it doesn't matter a jot what job description you give yourself. If fundamentally you carry out agency work, the legislation, the regulation don't disappear just because you've changed the name of your business. It doesn't matter what you call yourself and you have to understand that. I don't care what anyone says on Facebook groups or in training companies, whoever's standing on the stage, if they tell you to name yourself as a property procurer, you don't have to be compliant. That's utter rubbish if you are fulfilling the remit of agency work. Now, I hear a lot of people talk about, I'm only introducing. I introduce the seller and the deal to another agent who then brokers the deal and does everything else. But if you have carried out agency work to actually find that seller, you have viewed the property you have spoken to the seller about what price will be favourable to them, what position they're in, and you've created some information. It doesn't have to be a fancy presentation to send over to the other sourcer. You're carrying out agency work. Don't kid yourself that you just, you've got all of this information and now you're just going to introduce it. That isn't how it works. Introduce is where you just have the name of a person and contact details who might be interested in the service of someone that you can communicate them with and you hand over their name and their email address or telephone number for the other person to do all of the work. If you have the seller, you viewed the property, if you're marketing for that seller, if you're negotiating the price, if you're going in and viewing and assessing the deal, if you're putting the deal together, you are acting as an agent. It doesn't matter that you might not directly be with the buyer. If you look at it logically, two estate agents working together, one of them has an investor on their books that wants to buy, one of them has a deal that they want to sell, a property that they want to sell, they both have to legally be compliant. You can't get away from it. There is no escape. If you carry out estate agency work, you have to have full compliance in place. So the lesson for this morning is it does matter about the name. It does matter. Compliance is still required regardless of what that name is. It doesn't make any difference what you call yourself. You can call yourself Jumping Jack Flash Property Advisors. Makes no difference. If you are carrying out agency work, you have to have full compliance in place. 
So that's compliance over coffee this morning. I hope it was useful to you. We will be back as usual next Thursday at the normal time of 8.30 in the morning. Until then, have a fantastic weekend. I hope it isn't quite as wet for you as I think it's going to be for us in the northwest. However, have a brilliant weekend, a brilliant chilled weekend, whatever it is that you're doing and wherever you are in the UK or anywhere else if you're listening in from outside the UK. And I'll be back with you and see you again next week. Bye for now.